Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 8. The Tisolsky Princess in 1969, a coal miner working deep in the mines near a small Russian village discovered a marble coffin that was almost 300 feet beneath the surface. Inside the coffin was a woman. She was found floating in a strange pink and blue liquid perfectly preserved. So when the Russian miners opened the coffin and saw the woman in the swirling gunk, they were shocked by her beauty. She looked 30 years old and had bright blue eyes. She was dressed in a clean white dress. The woman, known now as the Tisolsky Princess, was so perfectly preserved that the miners thought it looked like she was asleep. According to the story, news of the unbelievable discovery spread quickly. A helicopter soon landed at the coal mine and declared the area was in quarantine. The authorities tried to take the coffin onto their helicopter, but it was too heavy with all the liquid inside, so they pumped the fluid out. But this had unintended consequences. The beautiful woman in the coffin decayed. As soon as the liquid was gone, she shriveled up like an ancient corpse. When they put the liquid back in, though, she once again took the form of a beautiful woman. This sounds like a fairy tale, and unfortunately the truth is that there is no way to verify any of this. The only parts that have been confirmed is that a coal mine did operate near that village in the 1960s. The rest of the information, however, comes from unsubstantiated articles and local rumors. A professor from Novosibirsk who supposedly studied the mysterious woman and her rejuvenating liquid claimed that she was 800 million years old. That would make her older than the coal that her coffin was found in. The dating itself defies all logic. But if it's true and the woman is 800 million years old, it would mean that this planet has been visited by entities from somewhere else. And now for number 7. But first, it's shoutout time! I want to give a big thank you to Jason Crawford and Vic Morrison for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family! Number 7. The Mystery of Leprosy Leprosy is an ancient disease that scientists have never been able to solve. Leprosy is an enigma, a chronic infectious disease that is caused by the bacteria Mycobacterium leprae. In the wild, one of the only carriers of the bacteria is the nine-banded armadillo. But how did a disease from a random armadillo lead to one of the most devastating human afflictions that ever appeared? Or perhaps an even better question is, how did an armadillo from South America end up infecting people in Europe with leprosy? You've likely heard of leprosy before. But do you know what it does to the human body? Leprosy attacks the skin, nerves, and mucous membrane. The infection leads to disgusting white patches all over the flesh, and the afflicted person's muscles get weak and numb. Eventually, a person is stricken by paralysis, which leads to infections and the disintegration of limbs. The first recorded case of leprosy was in 1400 BC, but even modern scientists don't know how leprosy originated or how it spreads. It might shock you to know there isn't even an easy and reliable way to check if a person has leprosy. Each year, there are about 200,000 cases of leprosy. The bulk of the cases come from Brazil, India, and Indonesia. Brazil makes sense because people hunt armadillos and eat their meat. And as you know, armadillos are able to spread leprosy. In the US, there are about 250 new cases of leprosy every year. But it's not clear how the people in the US get infected. The whole spreading and contracting of leprosy continues to baffle experts to this very day. But some scientists think that Europeans were the ones who infected armadillos with the disease 500 years ago. Number 6. The Isle of S. Vedra Ever since Plato described the lost city of Atlantis around 330 BC, it's been a point of fascination and wonder. Plato's description has always pointed scholars to believe Atlantis existed near the Strait of Gibraltar at the edge of the Mediterranean Sea. But more recent claims have put Atlantis in Antarctica, the Caribbean, and even Turkey. However, Plato definitely said it was somewhere near the coast of Spain. And one potential location for Atlantis is the mystical island of Esvedra. The island of Esvedra is about two miles from the coast of Ibiza, but it's the polar opposite of Ibiza. While Ibiza gets over 6 million tourists a year, Esvedra is a ghost town. Most people aren't even allowed to step foot on the island. It's uninhabited and off-limits as part of a natural reserve. It's abundant in wildlife with brightly colored lizards clinging to the rocky cliffs. 
It's also home to endangered gulls and falcons and over 150 rare plant species. There hasn't technically been any discovery that supports the theory that the island was once home to Atlantis, but there are some interesting legends and rumors. One story is that the island was the birthplace of Thanith, a goddess from Phoenicia. It's also been said that the island was home to sirens and sea nymphs who lured sailors to their deaths. Some sailors have even claimed to see strange circles of light emerge from the sea off the coast of the island. Another myth is that the island used to be much bigger and connected to Ibiza. The current Esvedra was merely the tip of a huge mountain, with the city of Atlantis on the land below. But then, 15,000 years ago, the sea level rose and Atlantis sank, and now all that remains of the continent is Esvedra's craggy rock cliffs. Number 5. The Stone Circles of Junapani Junapani is a prehistoric region in the Indian state of Maharashtra. It's a fairly ordinary place, made up of vast green fields and lots of nothing. But it's also home to around 300 baffling stone circles that scientists have never been able to piece together. Excavation started in 1879, with archaeologists finding a variety of weird artifacts. They uncovered iron daggers, bracelets, iron chisels, and a wide variety of random tools. The researchers discovered scraps of black and red pottery, and they also found burial plots, though they haven't been extensively studied. Only about half the stone circles in Junapani have been studied in the slightest, but most of them are just sitting in the bush, slowly fading away into obscurity. The first evidence of human habitation in the region dates back to around 1000 BC. That's the same time that the megalithic stone circles started being built. The dating seems to suggest that a culture showed up 3000 years ago and went on a building spree of stone circles. They finally finished after 1,300 years, with the earliest stone circle being from 300 AD. But the who and why are the biggest unsolved mysteries here. Archaeologists don't know if the stone circles were used for astronomy or cosmogony. Some circles contain human remains and funerary objects. Yet it's doubtful they were all used specifically for burials. Even weirder is that these stone circles are still in use. Researchers have found random collections of chicken feathers near the stones, meaning that people have been returning to the circles to conduct rituals, even in modern times. Number 4. Pinard Castle Almost nothing is known about the mysterious Pinard Castle in South Wales. The castle's history has been lost to the winds of time, and all that remains today are the bricks and stones that were used to build the structure, as well as some walls that look like they could fall down at any second. Most historians agree the castle was likely constructed in the 12th century AD. A small village then grew around the castle, but nothing remains of it today. The only sign there was ever a village is the single wall of a ruined church. The original castle was little more than a wooden fortification with a primitive stone keep. It may have been built by Henry de Beaumont, the first Earl of Warwick, but nobody really knows. By the year 1400, Pinard Castle was already abandoned. The whole area was a ghost town with no clue as to what scared everyone away. There is no mention in the records of an attack on the castle, but there is a local legend that has to do with a group of fairies. The old folk tale is that the owner of the castle refused the local fairies the right to dance at his wedding. So the magical fairy sent a storm to destroy the building. A mountain of sand blew out of the sea and ripped the castle to shreds and as a result, the Baron and everyone else were forced to flee. The legend was likely inspired by what really happened. Experts think the sand dunes slowly encroached on the castle until it became impossible to live in. If you stumbled upon a castle in the middle of nowhere, would you consider moving in? Let me know in the comments below! And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe! Now, on to number 3. Number 3. The Dashka Stone the Dashka Stone, also known as the Map of the Creator, has been baffling scientists since it was found in 1999. Some experts have estimated the age of the stone at 120 million years. The stone appears to show a series of civil engineering projects. It records 7,457 miles of channels and dams. The stone also appears to be covered in hieroglyphic notations detailing the individual channels. The notations have never been deciphered, and what's even more unusual is that the map appears to have been made from an aerial point of view. Whoever created the map had done so while looking down from above. 
The mysterious artifact was found by archaeologists with the Bashkir State University, deep in Russia's Ural Mountains. The tablet is six inches thick and almost six feet tall, and it weighs around one ton. It appears to be an accurate topographical map of an area in the Ural Mountains called Bashkiria. The man who discovered the stone, Alexander Chuvryov, named it Dashka after his granddaughter who was born on the same day as the discovery. The stone consists of three main layers. There's a layer made of a ceramic compound, and the second layer is comprised of diopside glass that's enriched with silicon. Then, the last layer is made of a calcium porcelain mixture. There is no way this thing was created in nature. Somebody made it using the different elements so that it would last a long time. But what about the dating of 120 million years? Sadly, that likely isn't true. The date was derived from a pair of seashells discovered with the stone slab. The shells were locked inside the stone, but they likely weren't natural. The ancient seashells may have been put inside the slab as decoration. And a more reasonable guess is that the tablet was made 3,000 years ago by an unknown civilization in the Ural Mountains. There are still a lot of unanswered questions like how did an ancient civilization create an accurate topographical map? And how did they produce an aerial view almost as accurate as Google Maps? Some say it's all just a coincidence. The naysayers believe the map only happens to look like Bashkiria, but is really a boring piece of rock. Number 2. The Mermaid Mummy In 2022, researchers debunked the existence of a fossilized mermaid that had been captivating Japan for years. The mermaid was kept in a sealed wooden box at a Japanese temple in the Okayama prefecture since the 19th century. Then, about 40 years ago, the people stopped worshipping the weird mummy. And after that, it was put in a box and stored at the temple. Before, people had been idolizing the freak show in its glass display box. It was supposedly captured by a fisherman in the late 1730s. Researchers never thought it was a real mermaid, and there was also no evidence of it being a ningyo from Japanese myth, a creature with both fish and human-like features. They figured it was a kind of gruesome Frankenstein-style creation of various animal parts. They thought it was made from the torso and head of a monkey that had been sewn onto the body of a fish. This may have been done to create the likeness of a hideous mer freak, likely to be used as a hoax to make money by some ancient Japanese showman. But in 2022, researchers from the Kurenshiki University of Science and the Arts took the mermaid back to their laboratory. Of course, though, they first asked the priest at the temple if they were allowed. Then they studied the creepy artifact using all the techniques at their disposal. They used X-ray scans and CT scans, radiocarbon dating, and even DNA analysis. But what they discovered was even weirder than what they'd anticipated. The torso didn't belong to a monkey. Somebody crafted it very skillfully out of cloth, paper, and cotton. It was painted with a simple mixture of sand and charcoal. And afterward, the chest was covered in pieces of animal hair and fish scales. The jaws of the creature came from a predatory fish, and its hands likely came from something like a raccoon. Dating revealed the creature was put together around the early 1800s. The researchers at the university think it was made by someone who wanted to make locals believe that legendary ningyos were real. It wasn't even that strange of a thing to do. There are at least 14 other examples of mermaids in Japan. Somebody really wanted people to believe in mythological fish creatures with human heads. This was likely because ningyos were thought to have healing properties. So whoever faked the mermaids must have made a fortune. Number 1. The Hybrid In 2018, researchers in Siberia's Altai Mountains discovered the skeletal remains of a child inside a cave. It wasn't a full skeleton, as only a single bone and some teeth were left. But still, researchers were able to use DNA sequencing to discover a shocking truth about the child. The bone and teeth belonged to an ancient girl who was the only known hybrid in existence. She was born from two distinct species of human. Her father was an ancient Denisovan, but her mother was a Neanderthal. The cave where her remains were found was populated by Neanderthals, but what this means is anybody's guess. Neanderthals and Denisovans were totally different types of humans. They separated from one another on the evolutionary tree roughly 400,000 years ago. Scientists know that there was breeding between the species, but up until 2018, they'd never found proof of it. 
Finding any proof of the Denisovans at all is challenging because the only fossils of them have been collected in Siberia, whereas Neanderthals have been found all over Europe. Scientists nicknamed the child Denny, but why she was born in the first place is an unanswered question. The DNA of Neanderthals and Denisovans are so different that they are easily distinguishable when testing ancient remains. It's doubtful that they interbred frequently or else their DNA would be more alike. So could this have been a forbidden love affair between two extinct species of human 90,000 years ago? What do you think? Let me know in the comments! Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up for more! Let me know what you'd like to see in the next one! See you later! Bye!